Hey everyone, welcome to a first look at our new tool UV Flow, which myself and JF Matthew have been working on in the background for the last couple months, and I'm really excited to share it with everybody. But before we start selling it on the Blender market, I want to make sure that it's really solid, and that's why I've invited you to alpha test this, and if you do alpha test it, then you can get the first release for free. If you are watching this video and you're not an alpha tester, then you can go ahead and sign up for that in the link below. So this video is just a walkthrough of the features so you can know what to test. To use UV Flow, first enable it in the Blender Preferences. Then the main feature is going to be found in Edit Mode. There's an entirely new tool added to the toolbar called Cut UV. It has this little knife with a checker texture icon. And once you enable it, then you'll see a couple things. First, there's a bunch of settings up here in the top. And if you don't see that up there, then you can either right click and show tool settings, or you can go to your sidebar and find it under Tool. You'll get all the same options here, but it's just a little bit less convenient to work with, so I'll leave that off. Now, when you're in the Cut UV tool and you hover over your mesh, you'll see you'll get a pre-selection highlight over edges and faces. This tool is all about marking and clearing seams, but there's a whole lot more to it. But first, let's just go ahead and left click on an edge to mark a seam. You'll see that it switched us to edge select mode, and I can do that over and over again. I'll go ahead and turn off my move gizmo and also turn on screencast keys so you can see what I'm doing here. And you'll see that I can just, you know, left click to place a seam. However, I can also alt left click to clear a seam. Now in Blender, you can pretty easily mark a seam just by right clicking and hitting mark seam, but I don't really want to right click all of the time and do two clicks in what should just be one. So that's slightly faster than normal, but even so, there's a couple other things that you can do in UV Flow that make the process of marking seams a whole lot easier. First, you can also just left click and drag to draw a seam. So instead of doing this one by one, of course, we can just go ahead and left click and draw it out like that. You'll see a bunch of little dots which indicate the next vertex that you can go to. And so you can just draw, you know, whatever path you want um, all the way around the mesh. I'll go ahead and undo that. But you can see I can just left click and draw very easily. Now we can also alt left click, just like we could um, alt left click to clear a seam before. We can alt left click and drag to clear a seam path, just like so. We can also do the hotkey for control and mark the shortest path between two edges as a seam. So here I've left clicked to set the active edge, then I can hold control and you can see a little preview of what will be marked. And then I can left click again while continuing to hold control to mark that entire path as a seam. So we can do that very easily. Just select one, hold down control, left click to select another. I'll go ahead and undo that. And the feature that I'm most excited about is actually being able to double left click to mark a loop as a seam. So here I can do that, just double click and I'll mark that entire loop. You'll see that it ended on the poles as any loop would, but what's interesting about this is that it'll also end at any other seam. So let's say I wanted to split this section in half. I can just left click and create a cut like that and it ends at this seam, which makes it just so much easier to work with than having that loop go all the way around and down the mesh. This makes it just really easy to section off corners into different islands, just like so because I know I can double click and split just one section without worrying about the rest of the mesh. A couple other hotkeys that you might want to be aware of while you're working in the tool is that you can hold down shift to select an edge without actually having to mark it or clear it as a seam. Oh, and I didn't mention this before, but of course you can also alt left double click to uh, clear a loop. Um, but you can also, you can see we're hovering over faces, we get a face selection highlight. If you just left click on a face, then that'll select it and switch you into face select mode. But the reason this is extra helpful is that you can double left click on a face to select the whole island. Blender doesn't have a UV island selection mode like some other apps, so this is the next best thing. Often when I'm working, I'm working with geometry that's overlapping or kind of occluding other geometry. So the way that I work is I unwrap one section, hit H to hide, you know, go through and unwrap some other islands, hit H to hide, and so on and so forth until I've unwrapped my entire mesh. Then I'll hit Alt H to unhide, and being able to double left click these faces to select the whole island just makes that process that much faster. Now, all of that is already quite a big time saver if you add up all of the extra seconds that it takes to do all of those commands. It just should save you a lot of clicks. But we also have a whole lot of new tools up here in the tool settings that are also quite time saving in and of themselves. First, we have this UV editor toggle. Of course, you can switch over to the UV editing workspace at any time, but sometimes I just don't feel like doing that or I just want to pop over really quick to the UV editor and pop back. Well, for this, you can just left click on the UV editor toggle and that'll open a UV editor over on the left. 
In your preferences, you can set this to open on the left or split vertically and open on the bottom or open in a new window if you want. So that's over in the add-on preferences. And I'll go ahead and leave this open for now just so we can see the result of our UV unwraps. Opening the UV editor this way also clears out the image so you're not working on top of your normal map or whatever if you don't want to. That way it's just a little bit easier to see your UVs. Now over to the left of the UV editor toggle is our UV maps list. This is the same as the list over in the object data properties under UV maps. We can add as many UV maps as we want here, but we can also do that just from up here without having to dig into this menu. Now people don't often realize that you can have as many UV maps in Blender as you want, but they're often really helpful for assigning different types of textures to different areas of the mesh. So for example, let's say we have one UV map for all of our tileable textures, and then another UV map for just our decals. Let's say we wanted to do that. Well, the problem with doing that in Blender normally is that you have the same set of seams for all of your unwraps. And let's say I wanted to, let's just say, create a new UV map. I'll call this decal. And let's say I wanted to select, you know, just these faces, U and unwrap. Then I can do that pretty easily and change my texture however I want there, but it's very difficult to go back and do that again because my seams are completely different from this particular unwrap. And so if I just go ahead and hit U and unwrap, then of course it'll just reset everything that I just did. And that's very frustrating. So in UV flow, seams are actually tied to the UV map itself. So if I wanted to make a specific unwrap just for a decal on his forehead or something, well, what I could do is just go ahead and add these seams. Again, the decal map is the one that's active right now. I'll just select all of those edges and mark those as seams. Let's go ahead and U and unwrap, just like that. And maybe I want to clear some other seams as well. Let's say in this one, I don't really want the eyes to be separate. So I'll go ahead and just double alt left click, clear those out, and there we go. Well, now when we switch these maps, we're also switching our seam layer. So our seams are tied to our UV maps which just makes a whole lot more sense than just having one set of seams per object. And of course, you can do that up here in this menu as well. Just switch between these two here. Now, if you don't want that to be the case and you just want one set of seams, then you can disable seams per UV map, but I'd be careful with this option because it'll, of course, just erase all of the uh, other layer data that you happen to have and just apply the one that you have currently active. Now, in case you're curious, you can find the information for all of these seams over in the attributes section. So you can see we have all of these custom attributes set for edges for all of our different seam layers. So if for whatever reason you wanted to edit this manually or use it in geometry nodes or whatever you want, all this information is right here and it's no problem if you alter it at all. UV Flow will just understand the changes that you've made and incorporate that just fine. So that's where you can edit it if you need to, but most of the time I don't really have to think about it. I don't even have to go to the object data panel. I can just use this dropdown up here. Now, before we talk about unwrapping, it might be helpful to actually see the result of our textures. So I'll go back to our original UV map here. And oftentimes when you're unwrapping, of course, you want to see a checker texture on top of the mesh. Well, in order to do that in UV flow, you literally just click this button to enable UV overlays, and you'll see a couple things. First, you'll see we now have a checker texture applied, and we now have some seams that are highly visible. What's cool about this is that it's actually a preference in UV flow, so it gets remembered every time you enter and exit the tool. So if I go to my box select tool or my extrude tool, I can do whatever work that I need to, but whenever I'm ready to UV unwrap, I can just go ahead and select this and go back and have my checker texture applied. If you want to save this, you can go to preferences and save your preferences. And you can see that's also you know a preference here. Uh, this is just mirrored up here in the, the header. So use overlays, turn that on or off. Uh, if you want to have this enabled, just go ahead and save your preferences and you'll never have to worry about applying a checker texture again. As soon as you enter the tool, boom, it's just applied. Now there's a bunch of options for this. Let's just skip the seams for now and head down to the checker texture. You can set any resolution to this as you like, and it doesn't even have to be square. Uh, you can also set this to the blender color grid if you want, just like so, or one of these other defaults. So I've added a couple other fun ones, but oftentimes I just like to use the Blender grid. Now, a couple things about the checker texture is that you can also enable it in object mode if you want, because if we switch over to object mode, of course, we're exiting the tool and so we don't see it anymore, but oftentimes it's helpful to have, you know, an entire scene checker textured. So what we could do is just have all of our objects. Let's just have a couple cubes here. Go to object and enable UV checkers. 
Now, an important thing to note is that that leaves this object still in solid view. So even if it has, you know, normal maps or bump maps or color maps or whatever, this isn't going to enable textures for all of your objects. So it'll still be a nice solid object and you won't get distracted by, you know, all of the, the random, you know, normal map colors or whatever. It literally just adds the checker texture to only the objects you have selected and leaves the rest of them in solid view. Now, this also works in material preview if you want. And of course you can disable this at any time. So if we go to these objects, objects, UV flow and disable UV checkers, then that'll go ahead and get rid of it. All right, let's also go into material preview here, just to take another look at the seams. So I'll hit tab to go into edit mode here. And you'll see that I have these pretty highly visible and kind of glowing seams. Now this is number one, so that we can actually see our seams better, which is better for accessibility and all of that stuff, but also just because it looks cool and is more fun to work with. So it's always more fun to work with lasers than not lasers. So I've just made them glow a bit. Now this is done through geometry nodes and it's just an overlay on top of the mesh. But anytime we mark a seam, this is going to get updated. So anytime I do this, you know, it'll just work with these nicely glowing seams. Now you can disable this if you want, if you uncheck solidify, just like that. That'll go back to our normal seams. But if you have this enabled, then you can change the size or you can change the brightness. So often I don't want them to be too thick, but just a little bit of extra thickness just makes it more visible than it would be otherwise. Also, it's helpful that it sits slightly on top of the mesh. And so some of the seams that are otherwise hidden get exposed and we can see it a bit better. All right, with all that said, now we can get back to UV unwrapping, which is of course the main part of this. We have this whole unwrap menu with a couple new options that aren't available outside of UV flow. However, the first thing is this record button, which is the auto unwrap button. So similar to the auto keying option down here in the timeline, we have this auto unwrap. Just go ahead and click this. And anytime you mark a seam, it'll just go ahead and unwrap that area. Now Blender already has a live unwrap. So some people have asked, you know, how is this different? And there's actually one small, but very, very important difference between Blender's live unwrap and UV flows auto unwrap. And that's that if we go ahead and let's just turn on UV uh, live unwrap, and then we have to go up here, live unwrap. Um, if we go ahead and do this, and let's just say we select some edges, right click, mark seam, you'll notice that it's unwrapped the object for us. The problem is it's unwrapped the entire object for us. And this can be incredibly frustrating if you have an, a part of your mesh that you've edited manually. Let's just say we had these eyeball sockets and we had them exactly where we wanted them to be. Maybe we straightened them out using some you know, UV straightening tool um, or otherwise changed them. Maybe we rotated them into place whatever it was, we were completely done with this section. Blender's just going to unwrap the entire thing. And so, you know, we can make all the changes we want over here in the UV editor, but as soon as we mark another seam or clear another seam, all of that work is just going to go away. Let's go ahead and go back to edge select mode. Select those, you know, right click, clear seam. It just undoes all of that work. Of course, you can also use Blender's pinning feature to make sure things don't move. However, then you're just constantly pinning and unpinning things, and that's still just kind of a waste of time. Um, so what we have instead in UV flow is this auto unwrap that only affects the selected area. So if I go back to UV and turn off live unwrap, um, let's see options and live unwrap, then I can go ahead and edit the forehead, you know, and it's not going to affect the eyes. Now, of course, you know, it's not gonna be packed uh, with the eyes and stuff, but that's what packing is for. You know, you unwrap first and then you pack all at the end. So when you're unwrapping, just think about, you know, is this too stretched? Is this straightened? Is this oriented in the correct direction? All of that, do that first and then pack all at the end. And when you do it that way, then you don't have to worry about messing up other areas of your mesh. So you can work very, very quickly that way. Um, and it's also just more efficient because you're not packing the entire thing every single time. Now there's a couple other options that UV flow has that just make things a little bit easier. First is auto align. If you don't have this enabled, actually, let's go ahead and just uncheck that. And let's say you have a long skinny part of the mesh. Let's just make some sort of cut down here. There we go. That's a perfect example. Here we have an unwrap that's just kind of skewed slightly to the side. Well, we can just turn on auto align. And then when we unwrap, things get straightened out as best as possible. 
So this isn't going to work perfect for every single object, but it's going to be a whole lot better of a result than you'd have otherwise. All this is really doing is just going to UV and align rotation and setting this to auto, but I found that to work pretty well for a lot of unwraps. And so it will take a little bit of extra computation if you have this enabled. So maybe if you're finding a little bit of slowdown with high poly objects, then maybe go ahead and uncheck this and just do that uh, manually after the fact. But for a lot of the times I can just turn this on and forget about it and just have better unwraps right out of the gate. Now also we have this split section where we can split any attribute as if it was a seam. So oftentimes I wanna do this for sharp edges on hard surface objects. So let's say we're just working with our mesh here. Uh, let's say we don't even have um, too many seams. Let's just say we wanted to mark this as sharp. Well, we could go back to UV flow select everything and unwrap it. And as long as this is enabled, it'll treat that sharp edge as if it was a seam. You can see that this has been split into two sections. So in UV flow, you don't even have to have seams if you don't want to. You can work entirely with sharp edges, bevels, creases, freestyle marks. You can also work at angles. So let's just say this doesn't have a ton of sharp angles, but let's say any edge um, with an angle greater than 20 degrees also gets split. Then you can unwrap like that as well. Um, so this can be you know, a quick way to just auto unwrap something if you want to. Also good for hard surface stuff. Now you can also mark these as seams if you'd like as you unwrap to actually apply these seams. Often I don't like to do that um, just because it's a little bit destructive, but you can do that if you want. I'll go ahead and undo that though. And I'll go ahead and clear that sharp edge. All right, the rest of this is stuff that you can already do in Blender's Unwrap, like applying subdiv and apply texture aspect. Those are default options. But the one that I'm really excited about is apply scale. So I'm sure you're familiar with not applying scale in object mode. Let's just say you have some ridiculous transform like this and you forget to apply scale and you think, okay, this is great. Let's just go ahead and you know hit U and unwrap. Well, the problem with this is that now our UV grid is way stretched and it makes sense because you know we haven't applied scale and it's standard practice to always apply scale beforehand, but sometimes you can't really, or there's just situations where you don't want to, and that should be you know a perfectly reasonable choice. So what we have is an option which is automatically enabled to apply scale if it detects that the object is not set to one, one, one. And so as you can see, if I just click unwrap in UV flow, it'll unwrap it perfectly regardless of the scale. All it's doing is stretching the object in the opposite direction, unwrapping, and then stretching it back. So it's a very simple solution, but just having that happen automatically means that you'll never have to think about applying scale before UV unwrapping if you don't want to. Now I'll go ahead and undo that because I didn't actually want to mark these all as seams. And then I'll go into object mode, Alt S, clear that scale. And now let's talk about packing. Now packing can be a little bit slow in Blender 3.6 and forward because it has a new option for concave faces, which is a huge, exciting advancement. It's much more accurate, um, but it is a little bit slow. So I do have an auto packing option enabled that works like the auto unwrapping uh, every time you left click to make a seam, but that's going to take a little bit of time because again, packing in this version is slightly slow. I'll just go ahead and turn that off. And again, you'll mostly just want to unwrap as you go, but then pack once all at the end. So let's go ahead and look at these packing options. First, you can choose what to include. Selected faces is kind of what makes sense by default. You just, you know, whatever is selected is what gets packed when you hit the little play button. That's gonna take a second because it's using the complex but more accurate algorithm. And you'll see that it's laid out just fine. But you can also pack the entire object or selected materials. Selected materials is kind of interesting because it's going to pack that material for every object that you have in your scene. So let's say we have multiple objects that all have the same material. If you choose selected materials, then it'll pack those faces on all of the objects in your scene that again, share that same material. But first let's see if we choose selected objects, go ahead and choose pack UVs, then it'll pack UVs for all of the objects that we have um, that have faces selected. All right, so this whole object is packed. And the reason it's selected objects plural is because we can also access this in object mode. So let's say we have a bunch of different objects. You know, let's say we have, you know, many, many skulls, but we can go to object UV flow and pack UVs and change these settings here in order to pack them all at once. So in case you have, you know, a bunch of things that you want to pack all into the same UV space, then you can do that like so. But the exciting thing is, is that you can also group your packs either by object altogether or by material. So altogether is kind of the default what you'd expect. Everything is just 
gets packed into the same zero to one UV space. But if I set this by material, then everything gets sorted uh, into its own UV space by material. So just to demonstrate that real quick, let's say we have uh, two material slots here for this skull. Let's call this first one skull and the next one I'll call eyes. And then I'll take our eye sockets here and just assign them to the eyes material. You'll see that our checker texture goes away, but if you want to enable that, just go ahead and toggle that and that'll uh, bring it back. And now uh, if I go ahead and pack everything and have grouped by material enabled, and let me just set this to a faster method just so it doesn't take forever and I'll go back to uh, shapes in a second. Um, but let's say we have this grouped by material and I pack UVs, then you'll see that everything that is in that same material gets packed into the same zero to one UV space and everything else gets packed by itself. This makes way more sense because other apps like Substance Painter and I mean, basically everything else, you're, you're painting a material, right? You're painting all of that all at once and it's called a texture set. And everything that shares that material is part of the same texture set. And so you want that in the same UV space. But in Blender, that's just not really something that is easy to do by default. And so with this option, you can do that automatically without even thinking about it. But if you want, you can also group by object if you're packing multiple objects, or you can just pack everything into the same UV space. So if I do that, then of course the eyes join everything else, uh, regardless of what material it is. But by default, this is set to by material because again, that just makes the most sense. Below that, we also have the shape, which I touched on before, and I'm sure you're familiar with in the new options in Blender 3.6. We have a concave, which is extremely accurate, but as you've seen, is a little bit slow. You know, it supports holes, it supports concave faces, and it's an absolute godsend for packing, but it, again, is rather slow, and so you definitely don't wanna be doing this all the time. You can have convex, which is somewhere in between the two. It's actually a, a good bit faster. However, it doesn't support holes or concave shapes. So if you wanna be truly fast, then go ahead and choose bounds. And that's gonna be the one that's the fastest and would allow you to work in real time. Now, another reason that this is a little bit slow is because our margin is set to exact down here. And so it's going to be an exact percentage of the overall UV space, which I've set to 1.6 because that's a safe default for games and it's kind of the recommended standard. But of course you can adjust this as you need to. But if you set this to fast, then it's going to be less accurate but it will of course pack faster and you can just kind of eyeball it if you want to. So you can see by switching that to fast, that finished a whole lot faster. Um, but oftentimes I like to set that to exact. And if I need to pack quickly, I'll set this to bounds. And you know, calculating the uh, exact margin for a bounding box is pretty quick anyway. And so you can just work like that in basically real time. Beyond that, the rest of these settings are default. They're just all here if you want to. There's the pack two, merge overlapping, lock pinned, um, average scale. Oh, average scale is actually not a uh, normal option. And that's just doing the average island scale every time you hit pack. So if you want to you know, unwrap stuff, uh, let's say that you're working with the eyes here, or let's say you're working with you know, some section like this, um, and you wanna go ahead and pack everything. Well, if you don't have average island scale enabled, and you just go ahead and click pack, then it's going to leave this as too large as compared to the rest of your islands. So by choosing average scale, uh, that's the same as going to UV and average island scale, just like so. But with enabling that, then you're going to get a uniform texel density throughout your entire object or throughout your entire uh, material, if that's what you're packing by. So I generally leave that on. Again, there are some reasons that you might want to have some islands larger than others because you, know, you want more detail there. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. But just go ahead and be sure to turn that off if you want to actually keep the custom scale of your UV islands. Then lastly, we just have this other information drop down where you can read the documentation, which I'm still working on. It's mostly there, but not quite finished yet. So hold on a little bit for the actual beta release for that to be ready. You can also report an issue, which just goes ahead and emails us. And then you can also view this on the Blender Market, which it's not on the Blender Market quite yet. So that link doesn't work, but it will in the future. So that's it for UV Flow currently. It's actually quite a simple tool when you're using it, but of course there's a lot that goes into it and it took a little bit longer to develop than we thought initially, but we think it's gonna be incredibly helpful and speed up your workflow a lot. So please go ahead and test this thoroughly. If you have any issues, again, just go ahead and email us, orangeturbine at cgcookie.com, or feel free to tweet at me at any time. I'm John Lampell on Twitter, J-O-N-L-A-M-P-E-L. 
and we'd like to hear any feedback that you have. Of course, we'd love to continue developing this into something more because, I mean, there's so many things about UV editing in Blender that could be improved, and we're well aware of that, but we can't fix them all at once. Uh, we definitely have to have the resources to continue development, so if this project does well, then we'd love to continue doing that. So the best way to support the project is, number one, if you want to purchase the add-on when it's out, that would be incredibly helpful. You will, as an alpha tester, get the first release for free. Um, I'll go ahead and email that out to everybody. But if you want future updates and things like that, then you can go ahead and buy it when it's in beta or when it's officially released, and that would help us hugely. Or you can also share it on social media. If you're working with it and you think a project looks cool and you share a screenshot or a little screen capture video of you working in the tool, that would also just kind of build the hype and help us out quite a bit. So thank you so much again for testing. Any bug that you find, any feature requests that you have uh, would be incredibly helpful to hear about. Again, if you're not an alpha tester, then you can sign up in the link below. And I'm really looking forward to getting this out to everybody.